Hey guys, this is Cody Jones with Jengus Genetics LLC, and I was shooting a video yesterday um, talking about why I want to cab my heifers out at two years old instead of three years old. And I ended up, uh, I didn't have pen and paper in front of me, and that's not really that interesting, but I think that this is really uh, an interesting topic. And so if you'll bear with me, if you're curious about this or you've ever, you know, wanted to understand more, stick with me. I'll explain my thoughts on it and I'll show you the numbers. And I know it's it's a whiteboard, but uh, it's really it's really educational if, if you're in the practice of breeding livestock on why uh, you may or may not want to breed it two versus three years, or uh, one, ver sorry, 15 months versus 27 months. So, here we so go. I did all this on an Excel spreadsheet, but I wanted to hit the highlights. I think there's a lot of things to consider. Um, most people that I know that are professionals in the cattle industry, they go ahead and they breed those cows to calve at two years old. And I think the main reason for that is money. Um, and I'm going to show you why here in a minute. It's what I do. It makes sense to me. Um, my, my dad used to tell me, he said, you know, if, if your two-year-old has trouble getting bred back or if you have another issue or something and they, they don't calve for a whole year, they're still online with those guys that are calving at three years old and you've already got some money out of them. If a three-year-old has a problem, um, you're, you're, you know, you're out four years, five years before you ever get paid. Um, and that's that's a pretty hard thing to swallow. So uh, basically, what we've got up here, if it covers the second, year, the two year calvers, three year calvers, income, and then if it's both of them, they'll be even black. So some of the things to really consider. Um, the the big reason I've always heard why somebody would want to calve at three years old is longevity. We let those cows get up, get mature, and uh, they'll last a lot longer. But what I've seen and my understanding is that most cows in the United States are killed by four years old, um, you know, for one reason or another. And that's absolutely doesn't have anything to do with your herd. It's just, you know, averages. Um, so, you know, if you're going to if you're the kind of guy that wants to keep your cows for 20 years, it may, you know, you may you may disagree with what I'm about to say, but it's going to cost you something to do it. I uh, will say that, uh, you know, once those cows get big, they get mature as a three year old. Their breed back's going to be a little faster. Uh, the hardest thing to get bred back on a farm is a two-year-old cow that's had a calf because she's milking, she's growing, she's replacing her baby teeth, and uh, she's trying to get bred back and hold body condition for the next year. So that you have to have the right type and kind of cattle if you're going to do it on grass. If you're feeding grain, you can get away with some stuff. Um, but if you're doing it all on grass, you've got to have early maturing, small frame, uh, easy fleshing type of cattle under the right management. You have to you have to take care of those cows to get them to take care of you. That is important. Um, calving ease, my grandpa had the kind of cows that I'm talking about, and he tried one year taking 25 heifers to three years old, and he had two big problems. The first one was keeping them away from the bull because they were, they were ready to breed, and uh, the bull was wanting to breed them. And so running on just a, you know, he had probably a 300-acre farm there, and keeping them all separated was very difficult. The other problem was he he liked to feed them a little grain, and uh, he was they had them over conditioned. It was hard to keep those small cows from getting fat at two at three years old, um, and so they had so much fat built up in the birth canal that they had a lot of calving problems that year. So they didn't do it again, um, you know. So so there's some things there to think about for sure. You know, you don't want them to be fat at uh, time of calving. Um, you know, but if you're running them out on pasture and you're not giving them any grain and you're paying attention to what you're doing, they should be bigger and, and have less problems handling a calf. Um, so that's, you know, there's pros and cons to that. Just got to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, mothering, I put that in here <clears throat> as uh, some of the issues that I wanted to talk about. I think that, I'll say this, the heifers that I've seen that won't raise a calf at two years old, 90% of them. If, if any of them that I've ever kept, 90% of them would not raise a calf the second time, not even for the same reasons. I'm not, so I, I, I just, it's something to call for, for me. If they don't wean a calf, they need to go. Uh, you make, you can make excuses for them, but normally it's, there's something going on there we just don't understand. And sometimes God's just telling us to let them go. Um, milk, I think that you could probably get more milk calving at three years old than you would as a two-year-old. And so what I did to keep that fair in this, exper in this uh, experiment is my two-year-old calver, I had them wean a calf that was 450 pounds the first time. 
And then uh, the three-year-old, she weaned a 500-pound calf. And I think that's important. Uh, and I see this in real life as far as calving at two years old. They usually wean 50 pounds lighter than a cow. Um, you know, and that three-year-old, she ought to have more fat on her. And I, I think they both wean about the same pound, the same poundage as a, as a, as a three-year, or yeah, as a three-year-old. So, um, other things to think about here, uh, the carrying costs. So I did this monthly until I got them to a mature weight and I matured them both out of 1,250 pounds. I had a guy one time tell me, he said, you know, if you breed them young, you're actually going to stun them a little. It should save you money on feed. And I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm not saying that's uh, that's the goal, but uh, it will take them a little bit longer to get to a big mature weight if you calve them out earlier. Again, they just have a lot going on and uh, it, it's more efficient for them to be smaller than bigger. So um, it's easier for them to put on fat if they don't have to put on frame. But uh, we we matured them both out of 1,250 pounds. And what I did is I just, I, I think this is a little light. You have to plug in your own numbers, but uh, $2 a day, was uh, it's kind of always my goal for a big cow on uh, on fescue for custom grazing. So we just charged them two cents per pound per day, uh, 1,250 pounds. I think that's somewhere uh, 70 something, 72 or 79 dollars a day, um, or sorry, per month for a 30 day month. And uh, I, I think that's probably too reasonable, uh, especially if you're feeding hay, labor, all these other things. But uh, we had to have a number to put there. And uh, I think that's, some people are going to say that's high and that's crazy, but I don't think it is. I think, you know, it's probably a little low if you get to really figuring in your feed costs and labor costs and all those other things. But anyway, let's get started. So age, event, weight, expense, and total are the uh, what's up top here. We bought them both at seven months. Uh, we just figured we purchased some, you know, sisters out of the same bunch. They were both 450 pounds. My local sale barn says they're worth $2.40 on Monday. That makes them $1,080. The two-year caver we bred at 15 months. Um, we threw a bull out with her. Would charge $50 breeding fee the first time on them. Uh, she was 810 pounds. So 24 months, we hit their mature weight. And that's, again, not realistic, but it's practical for our experiment here. Uh, 1,215 pounds. And uh, with that $50 breeding fee, the... That you know you you incurred that expense a little earlier on the two year caver than you did the three. At twenty four months, our two year caver calved. At twenty seven months, we bred and incurred that fifty dollar breeding expense for our three year caver. Um, on that date, she went up to two thousand ninety eight dollars, and that included our our grazing up to that time and the bull service. So at thirty one months, we sold that first calf off the two year caver. That's keeping them up seven months. We're following this basically. Uh, 450 pounds because that calf was uh, going to be a little lighter. We talked about 2.4 pounds, dollars a pound, thousand eighty dollars. They both got bred back. Everything worked great because everything works in theory. That's what the young man that works for me told me. So they both calved back at 36 months. They weighed 1,250 pounds. At 43 months, we sold both those calves. The two-year calver caught up. We need a bigger calf the second time. They're both weighing 500 pounds. 240 a pound for easy math, $1,200 a piece. So with all that figured in, it takes 80 months for our two-year caver to pay herself off. She breaks even in seven years, 80 months. The, uh, the three-year-old caver, because we carried her, we had an extra expense of about $802 to $1,000 in there. It ended up costing us an extra 47 months. It took us 11 years to pay her off. And that's really the big difference to me. I think that's just crazy, um, especially incurring all that up front. If you had, you know, you put that in the stock market, be earning 8%, man. I just, how do you cash flow carrying a cow for an extra year that she's never going to pay you for until she's, I don't know. And especially if you figure you're selling them both out at four so they don't eat the depreciation. Uh, this two-year caver is just going to beat the snot out of that three-year caver every time on paper and for your wallet. Uh, now, if you're going to keep them to 20 years, uh, and this one's doing it anyway, I have my opinion. Um, I know some people say they don't last as long, but I don't really want them if they're not going to last as long. So 
best thing to do is get get rid of them before they hit that five, six year mark and start taking that depreciation out on you anyway, if you're not going to keep them. Um, but getting the right kind of cattle sure makes a big difference. Anyway, um, I, I thought this was really interesting. I was shooting a video on it the other day and just wanted to share with you guys the difference. And I was curious on myself. I couldn't believe it made five years difference to pay, make that pay off. Um, but it, it really did. And, uh, that's, uh, if you guys have any questions about this or you're curious about it or, um, you know, those kinds of things, I appreciate you sticking with me. Um, I, it, it's a little nerdy, a little geeky, but I think that in the business world, I think it's super important to sit down and figure these things out. And, uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, or comments, leave them below. If you think I'm, I'm, you know, just being silly for not keeping my calves, calves and making them breed for three years olds, uh, let me know why in the comments. I'm always curious to hear other better ways. And uh, I'm sure that there's an argument to be made that it's easier to get those three-year-old bred back. You have a lot less issues with them um, over the long term. But I just, for me, I don't know. I, I don't know how to, how to pay for that cow for an extra year, uh, feed her for free. Um, so I've been doing it this way, but hope you guys like it. Uh, like, subscribe, follow for more and, uh, leave your comments down below. Thanks.